Hey guys, Tony with 319 Photography, 319photography.com, and tonight we are out in Big Bend National Park, and for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up and operate a iOptron SkyGuider Pro equatorial mount, so stay tuned. Hey guys, so let's get into this. So we're talking about using an iOptron SkyGuider Pro equatorial mount to track stars. It is an awesome way to produce some high quality astro images of the night sky without star trailing. And you can do up to about five to seven minute long exposures of the night sky and have pinpoint stars and amazing detail and shoot at lower ISOs, which equates less noise in the final image. So they're a great tool to use. Now, before I really get into this video, I want to apologize. It's a little windy out here in Big Bend National Park. So if the wind picks up on the mic, I'm sorry. We'll try to take care of that and post as much as we can. And I know you can't see the night sky anyway because of the lights and we're focused on me and the tracker, but don't feel so bad tonight. It's, it's pretty cloudy out here. So we really aren't gonna shoot the night sky anyway, but I can still show you how to set up a tracker and the results that you will get from it. So first things first, let's take a look at how I've set this tracker up on a tripod. So I've chosen a very sturdy tripod. This happens to be a Manfrotto tripod. And you'll notice there's no ball head on this tripod. I've taken it off, right? I've just thrown it off to the side. Don't need it anymore. The iOptron SkyGuider Pro comes with an alt azimuth base that can screw straight on to the top of your tripod. That is a very sturdy way to attach your tracker to your tripod. If I attach this to that ball head, and then I tried to get into alignment, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, the movement would be super, super fluid, super jerky. It'd be really hard to align properly. So I attach it directly to the tripod base itself. That allows me to be in the most sturdy position that I possibly can be so that then I can start talking about alignment and having the, the, the tracker secured once I put my camera on and I actually start shooting. So next, let's talk about how to align this thing. All right, so first things first, when it comes to alignment, we need to know where the North Star is or Polaris. Right? This thing has to be aligned to Polaris because that's the axis in which the Earth rotates around and this needs to know where that's at. So you have got to manually align it to Polaris. So the first thing that I suggest you do is get your tracker on your tripod, get it nice and screwed down and sturdy, and then point the tracker itself towards the North Star. And if you don't know where the North Star is at, there's a, a million uh, Star Finder apps out there that are free, they're easy to use, or if you just look up and you find the Big Dipper, if you can recognize that, if you'll follow the, the bottom of the pot of the Big Dipper uh, straight across and a little bit down, uh, that usually will find you the North Star. So that being said, we know where the North Star is at. We're pointing the tracker generally in that direction. Now we need to have a more fine-tuned alignment. So on this model of tracker, the iOptron SkyGuider Pro, there's a, a lens cap in the front, in the, in the front of this wheel here, and then there's a lens cap in the back. If you unscrew those lens caps, you will expose the what do you call that? Polar scope. Polar scope. Okay. <clears throat> If you unscrew these lens caps, you will expose the polar scope. Now, if you look through this right now without turning it on, uh, you're not gonna see much, right? 
uh, it's, it's going to be hard to align. So important step here, you've got to turn the tracker on. And that will put an illuminated reticle in the middle of your polar scope that will allow you to put the North Star generally in the center of that reticle. Okay. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to explain that before I explain how to get there. For deep space photography, uh, you can download the iOptron app. And for certain uh, celestial bodies or times of the year, it can tell you uh, where within that reticle the North Star really needs to be. But if we're talking wide field astrophotography, so any images shot with a wide angle lens, I have found that as long as you put the North Star in the center of that reticle, you're good to go. So let's operate off that basis here. So if you look through the reticle or the polar scope now, you will see an illuminated uh, reticle. And as you look through it, you can see the stars through the sky or in the sky. Now, you won't be exactly online with the, the North Star. That's where this alt azimuth base comes in. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but turning these knobs at the base of the alt azimuth base, I can move the polar scope left and right. Okay. So that's these knobs here at the base. By unscrewing and screwing, depending on which direction I want to go, I can get this to move left or right. Now, this knob here will allow me to move the scope and the whole tracker up and down. So I will go through a series of steps to move the tracker either left or right or up or down to get Polaris in the middle of that reticle through the polar scope. I'm going to be honest with you, uh, if, if this is your first time messing with a, an iOptron Skyguider Pro or really any equatorial mount tracker, they can be frustrating at first. It can be difficult at first. Right? Once you get the hang of using it, it'll be much easier. Right? So don't give up uh, when you first start out using one of these. Right? It's worth the effort to put in the work to get used to having to align it. So once you have it aligned, then we can turn the tracker off, and then we can move into putting our camera on the tracker and balancing it. So we'll do that in the next step. All right, guys, so we've mounted our tracker on our tripod. We've aligned it, and now that you're done cursing the tracker after alignment, let's talk about putting a camera on it. So with your Skyguider Pro will come a bracket. This bracket is what you will attach your camera to and the counterweight rod, very important. So you'll see that this bracket here has a short end and a long end. I would highly suggest that you mount the camera to the short end. You need a ball head for this step. So we take a ball head and we screw this into the screw on the short end. And now I embarrassingly take way too long to do this on video. I promise I've done this before. There we go. So we get that screwed in and make sure it's nice and tight. And now we're almost ready to put our camera on. But first, we, put a, put this, we have to put this bracket on the tracker. So if I step around to this side of the tracker, there's only one way this can go on the tracker. There's a notch and a notch here that, that matches up. 
So it's, it's really easy to, to figure out which way this goes. Right? There's a screw here that will tighten this, this bracket down to your mount. Make sure that's nice and screwed down. And life's good. It's nice and tight. All right. So you can notice now, ball head is sticking up. This is where the, tr the camera will go. And then my counterbalance rod will screw in here. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Before I get there, there is a, a clutch that you can release that will allow this whole thing to spin. And it's, it's a black dial that sits on the back of your, your, tra uh, your tracker. And if you undo it, you can now freely spin your tracker. Very important that if, uh, before you start using the tracker, you want to tighten that back down. But that clutch, clutch is going to come in super handy here in the next step. So unfortunately, where I've positioned all of my camera gear and the counterbalance rod is way over there. So give me two seconds, be right back. And I'm back. So now I've got a camera, I've got a counterbalance rod, and I've got a counterbalance. I'm going to deal with putting the camera on here first. Okay. Again, make sure your clutch is tightened down. As soon as I put this camera up here, there is now a lot of weight on this. And if that clutch is not tightened down, your camera is going to swing around. It's going to scare the crap out of you, and it might damage your camera. Hopefully it won't. So let's put this camera on here. All right, camera's on, nice and tightened down. All right. Remember the clutch, still tight. Here comes my counterbalance rod. It's a silver rod, comes with your iOptron SkyGrider Pro kit. So now this will screw into the bottom of the bracket. And once you got it in, make sure that's nice and tight. Okay. Don't move, don't move it too much because you don't want to screw up the alignment that you've worked a, really hard to get. At the bottom of this counterbalance rod, there is a, a plug with a bit of a lip that unscrews. Take that off. Now your counterbalance weight, that's pretty good weight, that comes with your kit, it will screw or slide on to the, the rod, and then you can screw it in place. So there's a, there's a tightening screw here that will screw into place. Once it's in place, go ahead and replace that plug on the end of your, your balance rod. All right. Now, with one hand on the camera, mounting bracket, counterbalance weight rod apparatus, release your clutch. You have to wiggle your fingers in there. Now, with the clutch released, you can see that the camera may not move. It's dependent on where you have this, this weight at. So I'll turn it this way so it's a little bit more easy to see. Well, I will know when this is balanced, it, when the camera will stay steady and still in a horizontal position. So right now, if I let this go, it's going to turn back upright. I want this to be balanced where it stays in this horizontal position. So I will have to adjust the counterbalance weight up or down until I get it into the proper position. So that's, oh, so now the camera's it's too heavy on the camera end. So it takes just a little maneuvering to get it right. And here it really is a game of centimeters. There we go. All right. Now it is balanced. So I'll make sure that screw on the weight is set. 
and I can return my camera to upright position and I'll screw in the clutch. We've done a lot of things now. We've secured the tracker to a tripod. We've aligned it. We've attached the camera to the mounting bracket and the counterbalance rod. Now it's time to set the composition. So here's why it's really important that you have a ball head up here. The tracker is, is always going to point towards the North Star, and that's where it's going to be aligned. With the ball head up here, I can now move my camera into any position that I want it to be in. So if I'm aligned to the North Star, that means that I'm probably, if I'm shooting the Milky Way, right? If I'm shooting the Milky Way, my camera is going to be going that way, right? Because the Milky Way will either be in the south, southeast, or eastern sky, depending on what time of year you're shooting it. So I would leave the tracker aligned to the North Star, and I would manipulate my camera so that it is pointing towards let's say the Milky Way if you're shooting that. Right? Now it's all, for the most part, it's all camera work. Right? It's setting your ISO, it's setting your aperture, it's setting your, well you need to be in bulb mode for this really, um, because we're going to do long exposures of the Milky Way or the night sky. That's the whole point of having a tracker, so you can do lengthy exposures. So, as you've heard us talk about before, our typical non-tracked Milky Way settings have our ISO somewhere around 3200, maybe 64. Uh, if we're shooting with a, let's say a 14 millimeter lens, our shutter speed would be no more than 30 seconds. Uh, that's generally what we, what we teach people when it comes to non-tracked stationary Milky Way shots. Things change a little bit now that I'm on a tracker. So typical track shots that I, settings that I will start out with, usually around ISO 800, and I may stop down to f3.5 uh, or f2.8 if I'm shooting with a 1.4 lens. And I will shoot for somewhere between three and five minute long exposures. So that means I need an intervalometer and I need a timer set to three to five minutes, give or take. Play around with that time setting, see what you like. One final point here is before you hit the, the go button on your intervalometer, make sure you turn the tracker back on or else it won't work. Once the tracker's on, it's gone, right? It is, it is working, right? You may, you're not going to hear anything. The motor's super quiet and you're not going to see a lot, right? As far as movement of the tracker is concerned. Now, if I left this on for several hours, then yes, you could visually see the whole apparatus move but just in the moment, you're not gonna notice much movement. So once the tracker's on, I can hit the go button and I'm now tracking the Milky Way or the night sky or a deep space object, what have you. It's really that easy. All right, guys, so we've gone over how to set your tracker on a tripod, how to align it, and how to attach your camera how to balance your camera, and how to start shooting with a tracker. It's been a, a down and dirty look at how to do all of that, but those are the basics. So I'll leave you with a few tips about using trackers. And I said this earlier in the video, first, uh, you're gonna get frustrated. It happens. Overcome that frustration because what you can create with a, with a tracker is worth the frustration. Second tip, depending on your focal length, right, despite the fact that you're tracking 
an object, be it the Milky Way in a, in a wide field shot or the Orion Nebula in a deep space shot with a, with a telephoto lens, despite the fact that you're tracking it, it may still move at a frame over time if you're doing multiple, multiple minute exposures or multiple exposures at longer amounts of time. So recomposing somewhere through your shooting may be necessary depending on how long you are shooting for. So just be aware of that. Third tip, if it's not working, it's very unlikely that you have a faulty tracker. It's because you, you didn't align it properly. That's probably the, the number one troubleshooting advice there. Or you knocked it out of alignment while you were messing with the tracker, getting it set up. Maybe you accidentally kicked a tripod leg with your foot, or you don't have it on a very sturdy tracker and the wind's blowing a little bit. So if you notice that you, let's say you run a three minute exposure and you go back and you review it and you, and you see trailing in the stars instead of pinpoint stars, it's likely an alignment issue or you've knocked it out of alignment. So go back and check that first before you, you think of anything else. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it helps. And do us a favor, like this video, comment, and subscribe to our page. Hit the little bell for notifications so that you get notified when we drop new videos. Also, cruise on over to 319photography.com and check out all the awesome content that we have there. Until next time, take care.